Hello everyone, welcome to Ken Boster Ministries. We're so glad that you're with us today. Boy, are we going to have a good time again today. I've got a, good, a special friend with me today, uh, Pam Berry. Hello, Pam. Ken. It's so great to have you with us today. And uh, just, uh, just sit back and uh, tune in to us. We've got, we got some good stuff for you today. I first want to tell you a little about uh, Ken Boster Ministries. Uh, we are changing lives with the Word of God. I think that's very important. That's what it's all about, is changing lives with the Word of God uh, to, to reach the lost, to teach the found, and preach the Word of God so we can become united in His purpose. Uh, last week, my wife uh, interviewed uh, Eddie and Alice Smith, and it was absolutely wonderful. Uh, Alice talks about the blood of Jesus, and, and uh, Eddie talking about uh, how to hear from heaven. And uh, So I want to encourage you to listen to those programs. Also, let me just tell you about my beautiful wife, Mary. Uh, my name is Dr. Ken Bostrom, by the way, and my wife, Mary, uh, teaches a lot of good stuff on signs. You've heard some of her teachings on signs in the heavens and the blood. Woo! It's just powerful, good stuff, so we encourage you to do that. Uh, you can go to uh, kbn.tv, uh, or kbntv.tv, get that right. And uh, it's Sunday night, Tuesday, and Friday nights at 9 o'clock p.m., or you can also see us on YouTube by going, just putting in Ken Boston Ministries, and it'll take you right in there to listen to those programs. So we're excited about that. Amen. Amen. And I want to thank uh, uh, Kingdom Broadcasting Network, Apostle Joshua Mitchell. What a blessing you are to him, my friend. And you can go, you can see that in kbntv.tv. Now that's KBN, uh, Kingdom Broadcasting Network. Uh, we're very close in KBM. Uh, but uh, that's Ken Boster Ministries, but this is kbntv.tv, and it'll be a blessing. So thank you, sir. We love you. Well, Pam, are you ready? I'm so ready. <laughs> I'm so ready. We stay ready. <laughs> we stay ready. Um, Pam has written uh, several books and uh, CDs, and, you know, I've, I've done meetings with Pam, and, and she's led our praise and worship, like at World Ministry Fellowship. You've done that. And I absolutely love the CDs you have. I'll go down the road and listen to them, and man, I just get so encouraged because you are so anointed, and I mean that with all my heart, just so anointed when you just listen to her music, just like brings you right up into heaven. So it just it's such a blessing. But she's written a, a book here called Come Up Higher, and she's going to be sharing that, parts of your testimony here and different things. And We've got lots of CDs and things we're going to share with you in a little bit. But I'm going to read you something that... Uh, there's a forward from uh, Lisa Osteen from Lakewood Church here in Houston, Texas. She said, Pam Berry is a special lady with a special ministry. Well, you know, Lisa, I agree with you. I agree with you. Uh, in her book, Come Up Higher, Pam shares the story of how God brought her out of the hurts of the past into victorious supernatural living. You know, some of you just, you've been in situations like that. You've been in a lot of hurts and so forth. I believe you listen to Pam today. She's going to just really bless you, so listen in. You will be touched and changed as she shares her personal experiences with you. You will be compelled to come up higher into the supernatural realm of living that God intends for you to enjoy. We want a good life for you. I believe it is not accidental but uh, providential that you have this book in your hands, and I got it right here, <laughs> for I know that God wants to speak to you he wants to speak to you and use you for his purposes. Amen. And that's by, again, by Lisa Osteen, Lakewood Church. And Pam attended there about four years. Mm -hmm. And you got to know Lisa and different ones there. So oh, at this time, time, I'm just going to turn it over to Pam and uh, let her share with her, her parts of her testimony. Uh, Pam, is, as you can see, she's a wife, a mother, a grandmother. She's an ordained minister, a soul winner, and I know that for sure, <laughs> the one thing. I don't know if you get a chance to plug in there, that one thing, but she, she just loves to tell people, you know, what's the one thing I can pray for you? And, and I've, you, I've seen you pray for people, and they just Hundreds get, of people oh, just get set free yeah. and blessed. Anointed psalmist and prophetic, you, you operate in the gifts, and uh, we might see some of that today. Published author and, of course, evangelism. So, Pam, I'm going to turn it over to you at this time and let, just let you share. Welcome to Ken Buster. Thank we you. love you. We love Amen. you, too. <laughs> right. Ken and Mary are, uh, and Dr. Ken, they've just 
they're more than just uh, ministry friends to us. They're good friends to us. And their home was one of the homes that got flooded. And we had the honor and privilege of having them in our yes, house. Yes, our second home. <laughs> <you> know, so. <laughs> and they were covered in dogs. You know, our dogs were always... Oh, I love them. Lovey, Dobby, and Dodie. Dodie. <laughs> we're, just fam we're just family. That's right. And so, That's right. And one of the greatest things that ever happened, when you come into the... the the uh, family of God. When you when you accept Jesus, you come into a family. That's right. That's and right. Uh, so that's and the the title of the book is Come Up Higher, but it also says Living in the Supernatural of God. So when you come into the family of God, you don't want to just come in and ask Jesus into your heart. You want to receive all that God has for you, so yes. you can begin to have a supernatural right. life. Amen. Because that's you don't want to go back and live an old carnal life and a wasted life in darkness. You want to come out from among them and be separate. The Bible talks that's about. Right. That's so, right. So, but um, I was going there's so many directions we could go because we've got 35 years a piece at least yeah. that we've been saved That's and right. serving God. Yeah. So we could tell so many supernatural things mm -hmm. and uh, from then to today every single day there's something new that God is doing. That's but right. I uh, when when uh, Mary called and asked me to be on the program that morning, I was putting on my makeup, and you know it's, it's funny how the different places God will speak to you. <laughs> but I was putting on my makeup, and and uh, I began to see myself on the program, and I was giving my testimony. And when I went out <clears throat> to have coffee, Mary called, and that's when she asked me to be on. And so I knew that the Lord wanted me to start with my testimony. Amen. That's right. And it's kind of that's a funny right. testimony because I did not grow up in church. Mm. But what I did do was have a, I had a lady, and I want to say this to people, if you've ever taken a child in your neighborhood, or you've picked up somebody, and you've taken them to church, and possibly it was your own children, but then later on they got away from the Lord. But this little lady that lived down the, the, the road from us, and her son was my age, and he didn't mm. go with us. Mm. And so, but anyway, she came and she'd knock on the door, and she said, uh, Miss Secord, she said, would your children like to go to church? And uh, my mom said, oh, I don't think so. And I said, I think I would. Wow. And, uh, wow. So I got yeah. ready and I went to church and it was just <laughs> around the corner, a little Methodist church on the corner. And so, uh, but I looked forward to going and uh, I didn't really remember being saved. God had to remind me later, you know, and God's really good about that. He can bring things back to your remembrance that you forget as a That's child. Right. And That's especially right. if you're not nurtured at home and that the enemy through your life begins to block the remembrance of things that happened to you as a child that were good, that were God, uh, then God can awaken that in you. And I want to share with you this one thought. If you took children to church and, um, and even if it's your own children, the Lord gave me this word. He said, tell them because they, because they loved and because they took people and, wow. and because they got to hear the gospel. Right. And he said, tell them I'll revisit that seed. And wow. he said, I will make sure they make it. I will revisit the seed that was planted in their heart as a child and, and as your faithfulness for taking the children. And I, that really Amen. blesses me to know that. And so I just want you to be encouraged in that. And I'm sure right now somebody's thinking of somebody, that's my child or that's my neighbor, somebody you prayed for. So anyway, I was really thankful that somebody did take me to church. And I'm saying that because there, that seed was something God watched over through my whole life. And it kept me from dying. It, many times I put myself in a lot of danger and foolishness as a teenager. Mm -hmm. And so I know that he had his hand on me. And the, even the kids in the neighborhood would call me... Uh, uh, Mother Mother Mary. And I said, well, we're not even Catholic. Why are you calling me that? <laughs> and they would follow me around. Yeah. There's this one little girl, and she said, follow Pam, follow her. And I said, wow. I said, why, are, why do you say that? She said, I don't know, but I think we're supposed to follow you. And I wasn't serving God. I was just going to that little church on the corner every now and then, you know. Mm -hmm. But God was already working things in my heart, and I didn't know the Bible. All I knew was that... Uh, Kids, and I didn't want to do a lot of the things the other kids did. I didn't want to smoke at that point. Later I did. But mm -hmm. I didn't want to smoke, and I, I wasn't cussing a lot then. Or I just, my life was different. But see, the farther away I got and the, the less mm -hmm. I went to church, that started, you know, all going back to the carnal part of my life. And so, anyway, I just, um, that part was on a shelf. I didn't remember it for a long time. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to race up now to where I, I had gotten married. I had two children. And, of course, you know, when you first get married, you think the world is perfect. You know? yeah. <laughs> I married, you know, Jack and I had had one date. And uh, after the first date, I came in and I said to my mother, I said, I think I just met my husband. I think I just went out with my husband. And you know what she said? She said, I think so. She said, I hope so. He's the first one you ever brought home that had any sense. Oh. <laughs> so she liked Jack, you know. Yeah, so, and then later she didn't like him because he was a Republican. But we, had, we, we dealt with that, for, you know. <laughs> but anyway, so anyway, um, Jack and I got married and we had two children. 
And um, and I'm still married to Jack. He's the love of my life. We're about to have our great 40s. Man. 40s great man. He is. We're about to have Hi, our Jack. 47th year and together. But anyway, uh, we lived in Green Bay, Wisconsin. We'd moved away. And sometimes God will move you away to get yeah. you away from everybody Boy, so he I'll can you get that. you. <laughs> and so Minnesota we were in Green Bay, Texas. Wisconsin, <laughs> and there wasn't a whole lot to do there, you know. And... Uh, but anyway, I, I began to be real empty inside. Maybe that's how you are today. You just you feel a void in your heart. You feel mm -hmm. really empty and you can't explain it. You might be right where I was. And I thought, and a lot of people will go and think, well, I married the wrong person. And I think a lot of people get a divorce right then when right. they're feeling empty inside, yeah. thinking, oh my gosh, I've made a mistake. That's right. And I think that's where the devil comes in instead of God getting to come in. So, but I would just remember thinking, I don't want a divorce. I never, I always looked forward to being married. Right. So I didn't want a divorce. Mm -hmm. And I felt real guilty because Jack was wonderful. He was a really good daddy and he loved the kids and he loved me and a good provider. And I thought, what's the matter? You know, you think, what's the matter with me? Why, mm -hmm. why am I mm -hmm. feeling like this? Why do I feel like, why am I so unfulfilled? Why do I feel empty inside? And there's a scripture in Ecclesiastic, and it says, nothing under the sun but God will fill. There's a void in us. That there's a place on the inside of us that's made only for God, and nothing else ever will fill it. Thank God. Yeah. Amen. And that's, that's what draws us to Him. We're never completely fulfilled. We can, we can temporarily put this in and, and that in our lives, and, but it's temporary. And mm. things that are carnal are just temporary. They don't last. That's right. So, but anyway, that's so I was out, we were living in Green Bay. And I was so empty and miserable, and I just didn't know what to do. And this is what I did. And I just I want to show you how, how, how much God listens to even the little things, the way yeah. that we say. He's yeah. always listening to your heart. It's not so much even that you say the perfect prayer. There is no perfect mm -hmm. prayer. It is a heart cry to God, and Amen. He knows that Jesus is the answer that Amen. you need. And here's what I did. One night I said, is this all there is? Is this all there is? Yeah. But see, I was looking to heaven. And my heart was speaking that to God, though I, I can't tell you that I really even thought I was thinking about God. But I said, is this all there is? And I went to bed that night, and the next morning I woke up, and I wanted to go to church so bad. Now, I did not grow up in church. I just had that little short window where I was with the lady that I didn't even remember anymore. But, but God remembered. Mm -hmm. And so at that point then, uh, you know, Jack came in, and I said, oh, honey. I said, honey, I said, I'll, I said Let's, can we go to church? And he said, oh, no. He said, you don't want to go to church. And I said, I don't want to go to church. And he said, oh, no. And I said, well, why don't I want to go? He said, you won't like it. Wow. And uh, we had never talked about God. We'd been married two years. We had not talked about God. We'd never discussed anything spiritual. Got married in a pretty little chapel, you know. Yeah. We did everything people do when they get married and don't know God. We got married in a little church, you know. And, uh, but anyway, so the first time we're confronting something we'd never talked about, and it was God, you know. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I said, well, why wouldn't I want to go? And he said, well, he said, well, why do you, he said, you just won't like it. And he said, why do you think you want to go? And this came from God because, because I didn't grow up in church with my parents taking me. And I said, I think we're supposed to take the children. Mm -hmm. And God used that to convict him because he grew up in church. Oh, and so okay. that was the hook, you know. So he felt, he felt convicted over that. So, okay, I know what I'll do. I'll take her to one of those Pentecostal churches. See, he found me in a bar. He's, you know, they had the, the bun on the hair and they had the long, you know, the long dresses and stuff mm -hmm. and no makeup and stuff. So he decided he was going to find him somebody that would fix up good. And I cleaned up pretty good, you know. I, <laughs> and I had the purple go-go go boots and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Oh, wow. And he, he would see me dancing out and stuff. And, I mean, just with a bunch of people, you know. But anyway, um, so he thought he was safe and away from God. He had met me. You know, and yeah. um, and I smoked at the time and all that kind of stuff. But um, anyway, so when I said, I think we're supposed to take the children, he got convicted and he said, OK, I know what I'll do. This And this is all in my book to my testimony, but it says, I know what I'll do. I'll take her to one of those scary churches and she'll never want to go again. So um, <laughs> so he looked for a Pentecostal church and he couldn't find one, but he found an assembly of God. And he said, I think that's the same thing. So we'll just go to this assembly of God church. So we went to the assembly of God church. And this is such a wonderful, you're going to love this story. Because remember, I, I wasn't a churchy person. So we pull in the parking wet lot. And right away, I like it because there's men standing there and they're all smoking cigarettes. And I thought, well, you know, and I'm still smoking my cigarette on the way in. So I thought, well, I'll just fit right in here. <laughs> I'll see where go. And so I put my cigarette out and, and we went in. But here's, here's the part that's so sweet. 
You know, I, I want to speak to greeters now that are in churches. I want to tell you what a wonderful job Amen. that is for you to have. And I hope you take it very seriously. And I hope you pray for the people that are coming into your church before you ever hug them or shake their hand. Because what you do can change their life. And if the anointing of God is on you to touch those people, they'll sense it and feel it. Because I can tell you that's yes. what happened to me. Yes. And that when I went in and the first lady at the, at the door, she hugged me, Ken. Yes. And I didn't, I didn't feel anything but just, you know, just normal walking in. But when she hugged me and welcomed me, I began to cry. See, that, that little girl on the inside of me, that heart that was broken, was touched by the love of God. And I didn't know that's what was happening to me. But when that happened to me, my heart just melted. And I was real embarrassed by it because I never cried. If I cried, I would always get under the bed as a little girl. Yeah. I've only probably cried about ten times in my whole life. I just never cry. I keep things in. And but I never know, did cry. But you know, when people, all they're used to is probably a hug of lust. Yes. They're not yeah. used to a hug of love. Right. A genuine, authentic love. Mm -hmm. And the greeter gave that to you. And it was filled with God. And that's and it. Because that's God it. is love. He doesn't mm -hmm. just have love. The Bible says God is love. So that's right. the God of the Bible was hugging me through this woman. Hall that's right. I mean, Hallelujah. I was literally being Thank hugged by the love of God. Yes. And so... Yes. And so, I, of course, I'm wiping my, I said, oh, I'm sorry. She said, no, it's okay. It's all right. And so, you know, I'm going in and it was really funny because my little boy was, the oldest one was two. The ba we just had the baby, you know, he was like six months old or something. But mm -hmm. my son always clung to my legs. You know how your kids will do when they're real little, they'll mm -hmm. just cling mm -hmm. on to you. And all of a sudden he just runs off into this classroom and doesn't even look back. And I think, oh my gosh, because I was concerned about him. You know how you do when you take your kids to a new church. And I said, oh, I don't know if he'll like this, you know. Mm -hmm. And he hadn't been around a lot of people, but he just ran in there with those children. And I thought, well, that's really, didn't mm -hmm. look back. And he was ready to run and play. We put the baby in one of those little rocking things, you know. And I thought, well, he's okay. And then we went on in and we sat toward the back. And of course, Jack was still pretty comfortable. <laughs> you, know, you, you know, when you're first going back for a long time, you want to sit in the back. You don't want to get up yeah. in the front. <laughs> so we're sitting back there, and the music begins to. And few people say, you know, reach over and that, and they'll greet you and stuff. I thought, well, this is friendly. People are talking to each other, you know. And so, uh, the music begins to to start. And this is worship. Now we love worship. Oh, absolutely. We, worship it. is so mm -hmm. huge to us love because it. when you begin to worship, your heaven comes in. That's it. And mm -hmm. you get so connected with God when you begin to worship. Mm -hmm. And so true worship. And I didn't know you just a true worship of God. It says mm -hmm. uh, the true worshipers. True, that yeah. true worshipers. And so mm -hmm. we these people were true worshipers in this church, and they began to worship God. And um, and see, I was always in the bars and stuff, and I always loved to sing. And so even if I didn't know the songs, they'd have the songs up, the words up on the screen, so I could learn real quick and pick them up, you know. So I'm singing along, and, and of course he knows I'm enjoying it already. And then they began to sing in, a, in languages, and I thought it was Spanish. And so I tried to sing the exact words they were singing. And he said, oh, my gosh, she's singing in tongues, and she thinks she's singing <laughs> Spanish, you know. <laughs> and I thought, well, oh, yeah, okay. Oh, and I thought, oh, and they yeah. were doing this. And I thought, well, they're, they're having yes. fun in here. Yes. You know, yes. when we go to the bars and stuff, we dance and have a big time. You know? so I said, and I'm doing everything. See, I just uh, jumped in. Yes, right. And Jack's that's going, good. oh, and when Jack get nervous, he used to pull out his mustache. He did that when we were <laughs> married. He, he pulled out his mustache and literally just... Pulled it out, you know. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> and so he was pulling on his mustache, you know, and I thought, well, you know, he's really nervous. But anyway, mm. I was enjoying that. And, and then the minister came up, and it was a visiting minister. And I don't remember who he was. I just remember he was a visitor. And he began to talk about God, and he began to talk about Jesus. And, and uh, later on, he talked about the Holy Ghost. But he, oh, when he talked yes. about God... And I want to tell you, you need to be praying intercessors. I'm an intercessor. And an intercessor is someone that stands in the gap yes, and stands on right. the wall and prays for people to really have their hearts open and that the, the, uh, that people will come out of darkness into light and they'll know Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. and I know there were people that prayed for me. Jack's grandmother was praying for us. And so those prayers that you pray for those people, I want you to know that God's listening and that God's moving. It says he moves upon his word. And so when we speak his word, he says that he watches over his word to perform it he's going to act mm -hmm. he's going to act something out he's going to perform that word when we you know when people are praying for so pray for people and god will watch over that word to perform it and that's what was happening that day to me so anyway the my heart was being open to truth and i heard for the first time who god was 
They talk, talked all about God. And then, uh, Amen. and then they began to talk about Jesus and how God loved the world. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him would yes. not perish but have everlasting Amen. life. Amen. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but through Him yes. would, uh, that be, people be would saved, be saved. saved. And mm -hmm. so... Uh, and that was one of the first scriptures I learned, and I learned it that day. But um, mm -hmm. So he was talking about that, and then he began to talk about Jesus. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and began to talk about him dying for our sins and everything. And it was flooding my soul about God of heaven and the, the reality of Jesus and God. And, and this is what I did before I even asked him in my heart, because I would forgot about the little time with the, as a child. But I said this, I said, oh, God. Do you mean to tell me you are real? God, you Amen. are real? Amen. Jesus, mm. you are real? That's right. And I said, oh, Thank forgive me and my family. You have been a cuss word our whole lives. And I'm sure you've got people like that too. And Amen. maybe that's still you. And, you know, using God's name and damning his name. And, you know, God doesn't damn things. God that's blesses right. things. He's a blesser, not a damner. <laughs> and when we say, Amen. when we use it, God damn this and that, we're saying that God is damning that. You know, and our we used to do that in the world. That's, when yeah, in the that's world, we used to saying. say things like well, that. Well, and my family talked like that, and I talked like that, and didn't think anything of it. You know, mm -hmm. so we were using the Lord's name wrong and in vain. He that's talked about right. using the Lord's name in vain, and I that's said, right. "Oh God!" Oh. Yeah. But I was repenting of that for me and my family. Isn't it funny? Amen. I included my household. Amen. That's really the name of the the whole name of my ministry is Household Harvest International Ministry, Households for Him. Praise God, <laughs> you know? that's wonderful. So, that's uh, but anyway, so my heart was uh, really being open, and I and I also said, and Jesus, you're, G, we'd say Jesus Christ like that was nothing, and we were mm -hmm. using it as a cuss word. You know, you'd Lord, say it in, in, in an anger, yeah. in an angry way, and things. And I said, oh God, and Lord, and Jesus. I don't think I said Lord Jesus because he, I was said, oh. Oh God, oh Jesus, forgive me and my family for using your for using mm -hmm. your name in vain. Forgive me, and um, do you, I want to tell you how powerful that was that I repented even before I was giving him my whole life. I never cussed again, and I cussed all the time. I didn't cuss even because I was angry. I cussed because I grew up with that. And you you may be. I know that there's people right now, and that and just right now, just ask him to forgive you. Say, oh God, just just right now, just say, oh God. Yes. Forgive Amen. me. Forgive me, God, for Amen. using your name in vain. And Amen. then every time you go to the movies, it will Amen. hurt your heart when you hear the Lord's name. In me, and you'll just know, no, that's not right. And so I ask that God yeah. do for you what he did for me. And, and that you'll never cuss again. You'll never use his name in vain again. And it just left me. Yeah. You know, and too, it's, it's, uh, people think repentance is a bad name. But repentance is a good name. Yeah, it's turning away from the bad and turning to the good. Right, and just yeah. changing the yeah. way you think mm -hmm. is the way I look at it. You yeah. know, you repent, you change the way you think because, right. you know, we're so programmed in the world. Mm -hmm. we, we're world-trained people, but when we become a Christian, we learn about the things of the Lord. We get into the Word of God and we study the Word. Get transformed. And we get this in and we use Jesus Christ the right way. And the Bible says when you when you put the Word of God in your heart, it talks in Romans 12, that you yeah. get transformed. That's right. And, and, you know, when you ask Jesus in your heart, He, he takes out, this, think how supernatural it is. It doesn't hurt, but He reaches in. He takes out an old stony heart, and you yeah. don't even feel it. And yeah. then He puts in a heart, heart of flesh, flesh so that yeah. you can know God. That's, that's right. And, uh, that's and then your whole life begins to change. And, it does. And so, yeah. But I didn't write, right then, I still hadn't asked Jesus into my life, but I had repented of, of the sin of uh, using the Lord's name in vain. And so then, mm -hmm. th then they had a message and shared that. I don't remember all that was said there. But then they, I, uh, I began to get, and it was right before the altar call. And I began to get antsy, Chris. You know, that's <laughs> the flesh, you know. <laughs> and I nudged Jack. I said, I said, honey, let me out. I need to go have a cigarette. I got to go have a cigarette. And he said, well, you can't have a cigarette. We're in church. And I said, oh, I'll just go to the, the ladies' bathroom, and I'll just have a cigarette in there. And, of course, he's just about to flip out because he grew up in church. He knew you don't go to the bathroom. And, ladies, if you're going to the bathroom and, and smoking at church, don't do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not a good thing. Uh, it's not no. a good thing, no. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, uh, he said, no. And he, he knew enough about, about uh, church that he said this. He said, well, they're wrapping this thing up. He knew they were about to make an altar call. Mm -hmm. See, he knew, he knew how the thing ran, you know. Right. <laughs> and he said, well, they're wrapping this up. And, and he says, and we'll be out of here real quick. So he said, just, just wait a minute. And you can have a cigarette when we get out. So I was, I was aggravated. When you're a smoker, you get aggravated yeah. when you can't have a cigarette. Yeah. You know? So I thought, okay. So I kept listening. And then he went more into the gospel. But then he said that I was really ready to get saved. But then he said this. He said, now the Holy, he said, now the Holy Ghost. Now, I'd never heard that word before. 
-hmm. Now the Holy Ghost is going to come over the congregation and he said, and when he comes upon you, he said, you're going to jump to your feet and you're going to run to the front and you're going to give your heart to Jesus. And so what I did immediately was I leaned down and I grabbed hold of the bottom of the pew <laughs> and I held on for dear life. Oh, wow. And Jack leaned down and he says, what, what are you doing? I said, I don't want a ghost to come upon me. <laughs> and oh, um, Jack, said, Jack said, he thought, oh, God, she doesn't know what God is. She doesn't know <laughs> yeah. who Jesus is. And she doesn't know about oh, the Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost. Wow. <laughs> he knew wow. about all of that. And so anyway, um, but when the Holy Ghost did come upon me, I did exactly what he said I would do. I jumped to my feet and even startled me. And I ran to the front. And I think we need to get back to going to the altar. You yes. know, we're praying prayers over people. Hallelujah. And, uh, nobody look. Nobody look. Yeah. Well, you know, Jesus didn't die with nobody looking. That's right. We all, That's right. The, the people all saw Jesus die. And so, but anyway, so that, um, we needed to look. And so we need to go down. And there's something happens in your heart when you make the walk, when you make the walk down to Jesus. Amen, boy. And uh, you're coming Seems to like him. Jesus. He says, I'll draw you. And uh, when you go down there to the front, then, and ja I turned around, and Jack Berry had run right back down there with me, and we served <laughs> God together. Praise so, the Lord. Uh, and it's, and it's been awesome. all these wonderful years, and um, I want to go that's ahead. Awesome. I, I want to read this prophecy that God go gave ahead. me. Mm -hmm. Now, that's just a little bit of my testimony, and the rest of my testimony that's in Come Up Higher is filled with experiences. It's filled on how to... Um, I got the baptism of the Holy Spirit, never smoked another cigarette. I connected those two things together. I said, I'm going to come down there. I'm going to get on my knees. Uh, this, because I just, I was tired, I was exhausted trying to receive. And I said, and I'm going to, uh, I said, Father, I'm going to meet you down there. And I'm going to get my prayer language. And I'm never going to smoke again. And I had put my faith on those two things together. And I, my, the prayer language, I wore out the intercessors trying to get me born again. I mean, get me spirit filled. So I, I did the language just poured out of me out like a river. Yeah. Let's go ahead. Yeah, and I felt and like the... the let's, let's share this. Okay. Let's well, go and share. Oh, well, he wants me to tell you about the book. So yes. The book and the CD. The, if you go online, you can get the book. And then um, just go to... Well, he's going to tell you where to go in a minute. And I'm going to give you a free CD. And this has the salvation call on it that... Um, in the middle of it, the Lord told me to put a, an altar call in it, and I'd never heard an altar call in it. And I could hear Brother Osteen saying, Oh, God, I know without Jesus I'm lost. Mm -hmm. Without Jesus, I know I'd die and go to hell. And I started the, and my five-year-old granddaughter got born again on this CD, and some other five-year-olds did too. Amen. So, And you got a special for him today. Yeah. And so Listen. you can go on the website and find that. But I, can I, have I got time to read him my prophecy from the back? Yeah, if we have time, uh, right? You got about 30, about 40 seconds. We got 40 seconds. I'm going to read this real quick. <laughs> This is in the back of the book, okay? This is, was a word from the Lord. Lay down the lower life, his blood cries out, and walk in the newness of life, which follows after the heart of God. It's time for the eagles to come up higher, those called to ministries, um, to prepare your hearts and bodies for flight. Ooh. I may call you by day, I may call you by night. Okay, I'm not going to get to read it all, so you got to get the book. Yes, we, <laughs> yes, and thank you, Pam, for being with us today. You're a blessing. Thank, thank you so you. much. And you thank can contact you. Pam at her website, pamberry.org. Or uh, email her at revpamberry at yahoo.com. And uh, for ministry opportunities, just give her a call. Get a hold of us. Her. Get a hold of us. Yeah, get a hold of us. Get a hold of God right. and connect. This is your time. This is the Amen. time when God's pouring out his glory. Get in on it. Amen. Get in a good church. Father God, thank you for thank our you, audience Father. today. That's yes, blessing on Father God. Father God, that uh, the yes, message Father. today from Pam has blessed their, their soul and their spirit, Father God, thank their you, Father. body. Yes, we thank Father. you, Lord. We give you praise and glory for all that you're doing. Save in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Yay. Thank you, Pam. <laughs> all right. Praise the Lord.